Nothing's worse than a poorly labeled panel box. Anytime you try to make a repair or you have a trip breaker or you just need to cut power for some reason, the worst thing is just flipping random breakers hoping it shuts off and having somebody run back upstairs. It's, it's a pain in the butt. Over the years from your original too, the house will get modified, especially if your house is old. That old panel ID has probably been tapped into, changed a million times over the years. So what may be there probably is no longer accurate to where your house is now. So I'm going to suggest that you not only make an updated panel sheet, but you make an entire electrical plan for your house. It's simple. It's easy. It'll take you a little bit. But when it's all done, you'll never have another question again about what goes to what or how do you shut this off or how do you do it. It's good for safety and it's good for convenience. First thing. Most people don't have a floor plan of their house. There was one when they built your house, but everybody lost it, or the builder never gave them one, or they're the second or third owner. All you have to do is go around, take a tape measure, and kind of rough out all the shapes and sizes of all the stuff around your house, including doors, windows, and the major appliances. Then from this, you could do this in a CAD drawing, or simpler, just do it on a piece of graph paper. So I did mine on an eighth inch graph, and then I used kind of a scale of every two blocks equals a foot. That way it gets you kind of good proportions and it keeps everything nice and neat. I did mine in CAD, but paper's fine. If you don't have a technical drawing background, you feel like this is a bridge too far, you didn't take a high school shop class, doing it on a piece of graph paper worked just fine. The graph is nice because it keeps everything in proportion, and it gives you a pretty realistic look of floor of your house. Once you've taken the time to make this floor plan, I would scan it, take a picture of it, do something so that you can duplicate it a couple different times. Now I'd take a copy of that floor plan and I would go around and map out all the receptacles, switches, and light fixtures everywhere in your house. If you want to do it the right way and you want to use the right symbols, um, here's a chart for proper electrical diagram wiring symbols I took out of an old Black & Decker kind of handyman book. Now that you have everything placed, now let's figure out what is connected to what. If you don't have a circuit tester, you could just use a light or a radio or anything that's going to make noise so that you know that that outlet is active when you plug into it. Kill a breaker, and then start checking to see what shuts off. Do it one at a time, and as you do it, make a note on your rough draft. When you find something that's connected, put the number of the circuit next to it, and then make a list on the side of your paper kind of like I did so you can keep track of what is on that circuit. Now if you really want to be an overachiever, while you're checking those receptacles, pop the cover off and write the circuit number right on the back of that receptacle cover. This will help eliminate any confusion down the road in the future. You'd be surprised what you'll find. People will tie one room to the other, bathrooms will be tied together to outside outlets, things that you never knew were connected. There should never be a light fixture or receptacle or switch that doesn't have a number of a circuit next to it on your diagram because that means you don't know what it's connected to. Once you've gone through and you've figured out what everything's connected to, now it's time to make your final panel ID. This is going to be the key that you're going to staple next to your panel and you'll always know what's connected and how to kill everything. ID the amps on the breaker. All the breakers are either going to be 15 or 20 or could be 30 or 50 amps depending if it's a 240 volt appliance and note that on there. Note the circuit number and then note all the other things that are on that panel. Another thing that I have in my diagram that I think is important is noting that if that circuit has a GFCI, a ground fault circuit interrupter, it's important to know because when those trip, those will kill other parts of the circuit. I made an entire video about how when outlets don't work, it's usually due to a GFCI in a bathroom. So it's important to note that if that circuit has a GFCI on it, this could be the source of other things not working one day. I think this spreadsheet is helpful. It's nice and clear, and it gives you a nice space to identify all the stuff that's in there. The last thing I did is made that final plan of my circuit map. I put numbers next to everything in my CAD drawing, and now it's nice and neat, and I stapled that to the back of my ID sheet. So now I have a visual and a spreadsheet version of every single circuit, outlet, and everything in the house. If this seems like a lot of work to you, it will take you a little bit. But you could argue that when this is all done, you would have a 
nice tool that will be available to you or anybody else working on your house. Plus, it will save you all kinds of frustration down the road when you want to be able to shut off a breaker for some reason, whether there's a problem or just to make a repair or whatever. You'll never question what anything is connected to again. This is a great tool to have in your house, and I hope everybody takes advantage of it. Thanks for watching.